to hit. They see a church that's on fire for God. Mm -hmm. That's the church that gets targeted. You're in a worship saying, praise Jesus. We are the army of God. We'll dare to discuss what most churches never will and strive always to speak the truth in love. We are watchmen, warriors, victors. I hear a different Together, we will fight the good fight and finish strong. This is David Hebner Live. Everybody, David here. Hey, what do you do when you hear a, about a group of grown men dressed like women? And I'm talking drag queens. What do you do when you hear of a group of drag queens coming to your town, into your town, into your library, which your tax dollars are paying for, and they want to read fairy, t fairy tales to your children? What do you do? Especially when the cops won't do anything. Well, you call the military, they won't do anything. As a matter of fact, they help these drag queens go into the library to, <laughs> to, to complete their agenda. What do you do in a small town? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You just take an AK-47 and you shoot out the transformers. You just, you, you, you next to blow up the town without hurting the people. Well, this is kind of what happened in a small town uh, somewhere in North Carolina. Spencer, it happened in your neck of the woods, didn't it, buddy? Yeah, across the state from me, but yes, sir. Okay, so so let me get this straight. So there are, a, a, uh, we hear, we hear that there were uh, um, drag queens, drag queens wanting to come into a library in this small town. What was this, uh, what was the name of this town? Uh, well, it's Moore County, uh, it's Southern, County. Southern Pines is the but, town. Southern Pine County. So, so, so they they come in and they want to read to these kids, <laughs> these kids in this town. And I guess the town tries to get the police department to do something. They won't do anything. And is it true that the military actually uh, helps these drag queens? That they back these drag queens up to to be able to go in and read uh, uh, garbage to our to those kids, well, local kids. From the things I saw, it was a drag show fundraiser geared towards the military personnel at Fort Bragg. Wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Would you please repeat that? I would. From my I, sources, I read it said that the military personnel were the targeted audience for a drag event that was a fundraiser for the local LGBTQT whatever it is community. And, and you're telling me that the military was part of this? Is that what I'm hearing? Yep. The town didn't want it, but apparently upper brass officials in the military made it happen anyway. Oh, my God. Now I know there are program multiples. Now, now I understand there are Nephilim walking among us. I mean, there's no other excuse for this. It, 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 it's, it's insanity. It's insanity. So anyway, they wouldn't stop them. They went in, I guess, started reading. So what did the townspeople do? Did they actually get a gun and start shooting up a transformer well at least two subs power substations were shot up with weapons and they don't know who did it thankfully okay. I, just, I mean I, it's I'm, I'm laughing and i'm crying because it's insanity we're living in these last days and the bible talks about the great delusion folks we're in the great delusion you know what well thank goodness for somebody stepped up to the plate and did something so i, I at the end of the day these uh these uh, uh, cross-dressing perverts, they didn't have a chance to read anything to the kids in the library, right? All right. All right, good. All right, so what do you, you know, there's three kinds of people, folks, three kinds of people, all right? You got, you got your sheep, you got your uh, wolves, and you got your sheepdogs, okay? Now, I want to read you an article because this is about a sheep dog. Let's go to this article here in Georgia. Georgia's sheep dog is recovering a home after killing a pack of coyotes that attacked his owner's flock of sheep. Farmer John Weirmiller said Casper, 20 year old Great Pyrenees from Decatur, fought off a pack of coyotes who were threatening John Weirwiller's sheep farm. 
The fight lasted longer than a half an hour. It left eight coyotes dead. Listen, one sheepdog leaving eight coyotes dead, but it bloodied up Casper, the sheepdog, with skin and parts of his tail torn off. He scampered off, but, but uh, returned injured two days later after um, uh, Weirwiller put out a call on social media. He was kind of looking at me like, boss, stop looking at how bad I look and just take care of me, where Miller said. In a Facebook post, where Miller said that the emergency vets were able to uh, close up Casper's neck wounds. This is really great because it is, um, it, it's so much easier to control infection when the wound is not open. And if all goes well, he will need no skin grafts in that area, he wrote. It's really a remarkable bit of news and we're all celebrating. The, uh, though dogs are rarely prevail, though dogs rarely prevail like Casper, packs of coyotes attack pets. Uh, attacking pets have grown somewhat common in rural and growing suburban areas um, throughout the United States. All right, folks, why am I reading this? Three kinds of people: sheep, wolves, and sheepdogs. All right, God's people are the sheep. We understand there's a shepherd. Jesus is the shepherd. Christ is the shepherd. Scripture says that he is the shepherd. But you and I are the sheepdogs. We assist the shepherd. We take care of the sheep. And what does that mean? What does that mean, taking care of the sheep? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it means. It means that God's children are the flock, and we protect the abandoned. We protect the lonely, the homeless, the hurting the demon oppressed. We educate and equip the sheep to fight the wolves. You are a sheepdog. God has appointed you a sheepdog. He said, oh, I didn't know I was a sheepdog. Yes, if, you're with, if, if, if you have the guts enough to stay with us week after week and go through what we go through to expose the enemy, you're a sheepdog. Congratulations. You see, when you pray for this ministry, you're a sheepdog. When you encourage this ministry, you're a sheepdog. When you donate to this ministry, you're a sheepdog. What do we do? We go after the evil one. We rip him to pieces, send him back to hell. We leave no prisoners, just like Casper. He would not put up with one coyote left alive. He killed all of them. And that's what we do. We send Satan back to hell. Take no prisoners. And we give them no rope. Just like Casper fought off those wolves, we fight off the satanic, the evil one, the deep state. All right. Good for you, Casper. We love you. All right. So... What are we talking about tonight? We're talking about more sheepdogs. I'm going to have a sheepdog with me on tonight, my guest. But before I do, I want to mention to you that if you're not part of davidheavener.tv, you need to sign up right now because we're going to go underground. We're going to ask, talk about things tonight that we have never talked about. Folks, I want you to go to davidheavener.tv, sign up right now. If you sign up now, you get two months free. You can send an email to admin at davidheavener.tv. We'll send you a link. You can get right in. All right. Ever had a memory loss where you've got misplaced time? Maybe a segment of your life is somehow missing, gone. Maybe it was, I don't know, 30 minutes. Maybe it was 30 hours. Time is gone. You can't explain it just disappeared, like, like someone just kind of scooped you up and took you off to a distant planet. Really, distant planet. Sounds something like uh, maybe a bad B movie, doesn't it? And for some, it is a bad B movie. Because some, and now more than some, because each day it's growing, the numbers of people have experienced this missing time. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about being abducted, being taken. 
by forces not of this world. Yeah, don't laugh. It could be you. It could be your grandchildren, your child, nieces, nephews. But who takes them? What's their agenda? What are they up to? You see, in these last days, we're going to see major signs and wonders from God. In these last days, we're going to see major signs and wonders from God. But guess what? We're going to see major signs and wonders from Satan, counterfeit signs and wonders. And he's going to use what we're going to talk, to, talk about tonight as part of those counterfeit signs and wonders. I'm not going to use the term abduction anymore. I'm so sick of that word, abduction. It, it's kind of like saying abortion. I don't know, because it's benign. It's, it's, uh, it's a sterile word. We're going to find another word for it with my guest tonight. Miss Karen, Miss Karen, you there with me? And while Miss Karen is out there. Um, yes, sorry. There, <laughs> yes, there I'm here. Hi, is. David. How are you? Good. Thanks for being with me. Uh, Karen, oh, yeah, we're we're talking about abduction, and um, and as 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 days go by, I notice because I've been covering this uh, now for about oh, four or five years. Um, not like L.A. Marzulli, of course, uh, who you know and who you've been working with, but yes. but in my own right, been covering it and interviewing many, many, many people, and uh, there's more people stepping up to the plate now that's being abducted now. You were abducted. Yes. Who abducted you? When I speak about the entities that abducted me, that took me, I they are demonic entities. They are alien, meaning they are not us. Um, and I like the way that um, Tim Timothy Alberino, sorry, puts it. Um, I believe that they are fallen from God's grace. They are what some people call fallen angels. They are mm -hmm. alien creatures, mm -hmm. alien entities. Yeah. How old were you when you experienced your first? I can't say abduction. I said I wasn't going to say it. Your first uh, taken experience when yes. when they took you. How old were you? I was taken against my will from as early as I can remember. You know, we don't all have a, memories of, or most people don't, of being one, two, three years old. But from as early as I can remember, um, it, you know, at least four or five years old. So tell me about that, the, the, the first time that you were taken. What, where were you? What was it like? What happened? Where did you go? You know, the first time that I remember being taken, I was taken from the bedroom in my grandmother's house. Okay. I was taken out a closed window or up through a ceiling. Okay. Um, you know, I know that makes no sense to people. You know, how do you go through a window? How do you go through, you know, a ceiling? Well, um, I like how um, Dr. David Jacobs puts it that it's future physics. It's advanced physics. It's beyond what we understand. But I was taken, taken out of my bed, out of my room, away from my family. I was a little child. I was scared to death. Why? Wh wh where did they take you? And how long were you gone? Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, you know, how long because you're your memories are blanked. Yeah, you got missing time. A yeah. lot of missing time. And as a little child, and especially back then, um, I didn't have a big clock on the wall or a cell phone to tell me, you know, what time I was suddenly back in my bed. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how long it, it was every time. It was different every time. And time seemed to be different, too, depending on where I was. Yeah. So there were times when I know I was up in you know, I was taken up into the air and I was in a type of ship. You see it from the inside, not the outside. So I can't explain yeah. to you what it looks like, but 
-hmm. And then there are times when you're taken, I was taken to a facility and I know it was underground because I went into an elevator. Mm -hmm. I went down and an elevator that went side to side or, you know, sideways and sometimes, right. you know, yeah. and sometimes very fast moving. So possibly some kind yeah. of underground. Yeah. Do, do you think this was a place that was a physical place, like an Area 51 type, or do you think it was a, do you think it was a um, second heaven, uh, a spiritual uh, arena? It, this was a physical place. Okay. I right. saw human beings and I saw alien entities in the same place. Okay. And when you're traveling when they're taking you from your bed a change happens you feel a vibration you feel a change in your body you feel it you know when they're coming and then you're blanked out obviously okay, okay. they're not taking me into another realm necessarily if they were possibly on the ships but definitely not in the underground areas no yeah, well, well let's talk about the underground because i i get a lot of um interviews where people say i was they were on board a ship mm -hmm. but but you're one of the few underground i, I have gotten that before but let, let's focus on that and and okay. plus you say it's a physical place which i find very interesting mm -hmm. um it, it, and they had um they had human beings with them now you're talking about there there were grays and then there were actually human beings right Right. But, okay. And what did these human beings look like? Some of them were in military type outfits. Um, never saw a name or anything like that. Okay. Not. Um, some of them were in what looked like white lab coats. Okay. Okay. And, you know, then there were, of course, the grays that either were wearing very skin tight clothing or no type yeah. of clothing, but they, didn't have the normal anatomy that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, 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 I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. And there were also the tall blonde ones, which you and I have talked about before mm -hmm. that were looked like, I guess I've heard someone call them Nordic looking. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. So, so you, you mentioned military. Were, mm -hmm. could, were these military, did they look like they were one of ours? Did they look like military from another another country another i don't know an, another dimension or did it look like yeah. military from the united states god forbid mm -hmm. the ones that i remember all were wearing a camouflage type uniform with no nationality no any kind of insignia like that okay. i remember you know like combat boots and the you know pants tucked in kind of thing yeah and, and that kind of thing and you know some of the ones that i was close enough to it, some of that could have been a screen memory making an alien entity look to me like a human so i wouldn't be scared okay all right it's a definite possibility mm -hmm. okay so so, so they because we've got about two minutes we have to take a break so they have you underground do they lay you on a table are they examining you what are they doing yes there are times when it's an exam on a table mm -hmm. you know it's a cold table it's a hard steel table or mm -hmm. You know, that's how you know it's real. You feel those sensations of a hard table, right. a cold table. Of, right. You, know, you see the things around you that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And how old were you when you remember getting examined? Um, five or six years old. Okay. All right. Okay. When we come back, I want to ask Karen about her being taken when she now gets older. I'm going to ask what they did to her, what they did with her, and why she thinks they were doing what they were doing. Folks, this is important for us to understand. It's important for us to listen to. It's important for us, God's people, to give an ear. Why? Because when I get back, I'm going to show you and take you through Scripture, I believe, where God is talking about this very thing happening in these last days in which we are right now. I'm David Heavener. We'll be right back. Um, listen, we have the new End Times DVD. Um, it's uh, I investigates uh, End Times investigation. I have a lot of my friends on here: uh, Lisa Haven, Michael Lake. Uh, I have Josh Peck, L.A. Marzuli, 
uh, Stephen Bancroft's. I mean, eight hours of of me investigating things like Satanism, and demonic powers, Illuminati, New World Order, Antichrist, One World Religion, End Times Miracles, Bible Prophecy. Folks, let me tell you something. One day, what you're watching us on right now, it's called, well, it's called television, it's called social media, it's called the internet. They're going to turn that baby off. You need a hard asset. It's when all this stuff gets shut off, this is what what you're going to be able to, to learn from and to understand. So I want you to uh, text the word CHOSEN to 91999 or go to davidhevener.tv forward slash order or call 844-806-0006. Life is complicated enough. Why worry about what to do with your extra car? Skip the costs of maintaining it, storing it, insuring it, or renewing registration. Car repairs? Forget about it. Here's one easy solution to your car problem. Donate it to a nonprofit. It's fast, free, tax deductible, and if you donate, you're going to feel incredible knowing you're supporting a great cause. Interested? Just call this toll-free number or donate online. Thank you. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and my employees and I want to thank each and every one of you for your support by bringing you the MyPillow that started it all. MyPillow's patented fill adjusts to your exact individual needs regardless of your sleep position. Because it works, we've sold over 70 million MyPillows, and now I'm bringing it to you for the lowest price ever. For example, you get my standard MyPillow, now only $19.88 with your promo code. Now's the time to get them for your friends, your family, your neighbors, everyone you know. MyPillows make the best gifts ever. In the times we're in, one thing we all need is getting a great night's sleep. So go to MyPillow.com or call that number on your screen now. Use your promo code and you'll get my standard MyPillow for only $19.88. For a more custom fit, my Premium Queen, only $24.98. Or my Premium King, only $29.98. This is a limited time offer, so order now. Hey, you know, everybody has to sleep on something, okay? You got you need pillows, you need pillowcases, bed, you need the bed sheets. Um, hey, if you got to buy it, why not buy it and help out the ministry? And I got to tell you, Mike Lindell, they sent me all of this stuff, tons of it to try before I, uh, I agreed to, to um, talk about it. And I'm telling you, it is fantastic. And that, that's not because I want you to go out and you know buy it to support the ministry. I'm just telling you, it is really good. The slippers are amazing. So now they're running a holiday special. Use the code name David7. Go out and get your sheets, pillowcase, bathrobes. Uh, those slippers are amazing. I wear those slippers. They're so soft, I could actually use them for a pillowcase if I could fit a pillow inside there. All right. The other thing is you have an old car, vehicle, anything broken down, uh, we'll come and pick it up. Uh, you can uh, just, uh, um, what is this, Spencer? It's davidhevener.tv forward slash car. Is that it? Yeah, davidhevener.tv forward slash car. They'll come, we'll pick it up, and the uh, proceeds, uh, they'll sell it. Proceeds will go to this ministry to help this ministry. So if you've got that old junker sitting in your backyard, uh, you've got something sitting around your house you don't want anymore, I'm not talking about your mother-in-law. I'm talking about an actual physical vehicle or something. Not a human being. Uh, don't forget that. All right. Also, uh, don't forget the Last Evangelist DVD. Uh, you can uh, pick that up and pick up the End Times Investigation DVD um, right now. It's got eight hours of footage on it. Um, uh, from this book we are talking about tonight, we're talking about, um, I said I wouldn't say it, but I have to say it. Um, <laughs> we're talking about abduction and this, my abduction stories in this book. So I want you to pick up a copy of this book and all this other stuff. You can go to... Uh, David Hevener, uh, dot TV forward slash order, or you can uh, call 844-806-0006 or text the word chosen to 91999. Don't forget to sign up to David Hevener TV so you can go with this underground. All right. She's a wife, mother, grandmother, worked hard, raised her family. She loves God, loves her family, bakes cookies, bakes pies, you know, just the ordinary kind of gal, right? Typical all-American. Not so fast. Karen is one, just one of many, many, many that, am, that are stepping forward. Saying that it's real. What's real? 
these entities, what entities? These dark demons that disguise themselves as, quote, aliens. She's saying she was abducted, which she was, violated, which she was. We're going to discuss this. She's been taken many, many times from a small child. Karen, you're there with me. Yes, I'm here. Hi, David. Uh, hi. So you were taken uh, as a small child many times, and uh, so now you turn. You now you're in your teens. Um, they took you. Where did they take you this time? Now that you're a teenager. To the same types of places. It's all very similar. You know, okay. it's the same place, but different things are happening to different people at different stages of life. Okay. Um, when was the first time they took you? Well, let me ask you this. Was there a time that they took you where they got intimate with you, where you were violated? Yes, absolutely. Many times. Okay. How old were you the first time? 16, I think, okay. is the first memory of that. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get, and I know it's uncomfortable, but I, I just need to get an idea when you say they, they they violated you and I say, well, they got intimate with you. Was it just an examination or was there something that they did where they were trying to accomplish something more than that? Yeah, there were examinations where mm -hmm. they were taking, you know, as the... Uh, things from my body, assumably eggs. Um, there were incidents where it was very physical in nature. Okay. Not All just right. clinical in nature. There is something so evil about them that this was an important part of what they were doing and they seemed almost obsessed with it. Okay. Now, were these the greys? Were these the the, the demonic um, beings, or was, were these the humans that were with them? The greys were the ones who would take me and bring me back. They were the ones who were the worker bees. They would perform examinations. They would take things, you know, um, other things that happened. It was not a gray, a typical gray alien interacting with me. It was a gentleman, looked very military, chiseled features, what you would call a very handsome man. Yeah. Um, almost too perfect, almost too handsome. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And was with me for as long as I can remember, honestly, that he, the same, whatever he was, um, was with me. And I actually, to some degree gave me a sense of comfort because I felt as if he had an, a level of affection towards me, a level of um, looking looking out for me, uh, protecting me almost. I felt uh, protected with him. Yeah, and, I, I, I want to come back to him, Karen, but, mm -hmm. but I need to, to take, do a little, do a little detour here. Okay. Um, so, you said that the that the evil that the that the greys what I'm going to consider and I think you would too as the demonic creatures the demonic entities that they were just kind of <clears throat> excuse me the the errand boys the messengers mm. um, but yet you said you were examined and sometimes violated but if they weren't violating you who was violating you so the greys would do the things that were medical in nature the things okay. that were very clinical in nature. The okay. ones, the other gentleman or whatever he was, you know, technically was not human, but was made to look human for me, mm -hmm. um, which is something Dr. David Jacobs uh, referred to, I believe, as a screen memory. Right. Um, was the one doing the physical things. Okay. Were, were they trying to impregnate you? Yes. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, were they trying to do it on the spot there? And, or, or were they trying to take your, your eggs someplace else and, and, and clinically do it in a lab somewhere or both? No, I believe it was um, them taking the eggs into um, a lab situation and then 
re-implanting what must have been a um, fetus because back inside of you yes and okay. and how it worked was and i have a, a vague memory of this happening a couple of times is that at the end of the act this person was performing that person would go away from me and a different thing would be inserted into me to uh in put it would pulse and push this thing back into my body and this was re reinserting the fetus so that the fetus would have a place to incubate to grow a right? fertilized egg which i would assume mm -hmm. was mine because okay. they were taking my eggs but okay. i don't know who the other part of that process was taken from okay okay and so they would do this and then of course they would take you back mm -hmm. now and now when they took you back did you feel like you were pregnant did you ever feel like you had something oh, yeah. you did and, and oh i and, was pregnant i went you, to the doctor you, i had tests done and blood tests and you know back then it wasn't we didn't have all these easy right. easy pregnancy tests right and and the doctor confirmed you were pregnant oh yes every time okay but you actually had and i'm going to be just blunt about it you actually had a demon seed inside of you you were growing a rosemary's baby basically uh, right basically yeah i yeah. mean it's sad to say but this is a seed war this is yeah. okay. a demonic seed war and they you know this is all the way back in genesis 6 yeah. where they so, saw the daughters of man and so your family they saw you were pregnant i guess you were mm -hmm. showing right you, you were in your oh, room. no it was only 10 to 12 weeks at the point that uh, then the baby would be gone. Uh, okay, okay, okay. But would your family know you were pregnant? Did anybody else yeah. know? They, oh, they yeah. would. Okay, okay. So you know, it, it got to the point where I wouldn't tell anyone until I got past the twelve week point because I was afraid oh. of that. You know, it's devastating to lose a child. Right, right. And, okay, so 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 you're ten, twelve weeks pregnant now. Do you get taken again? Uh, something happens where you're you're taken again, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. When you're taken, they're taking you to a place, and are they removing the fetus that's grown the 10 to 12, 14 weeks, whatever, they remove that for your body? The, I don't remember um, where they took me or them taking the fetus from my body. Okay. But what did happen is that I would wake up, have terrible pains in my abdomen, maybe be spotting a little bit but nothing terrible right go into the hospital and they would do the tests look in the ultras you know no no heartbeat ultrasound there's no baby there then they did a dnc and there was no fetal tissue now d did they ever s tell you that you had a miscarriage they said i must have <laughs> they say a couple of things one's one said oh your body must have absorbed the baby. Then the words absorbed the baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a funny one. That was really. Um, the other said, "Well, you must have passed it and not realize it." Now, how would you pass a fetus? I know they're little at that point, right. but right. there's a lot more in there with it. Yeah, yeah. How would you pass that without knowing? So, you Karen, you're you know any mother who's ever had a miscarriage, you know when you lose that baby. Right, right. So, what? do you think they did first of all how many roughly how many fetuses went missing in, in, in this process you went through of, of uh just what you described how many times do you think that happened roughly three that i'm certain three that well, I'm where certain. where did the fetus go what do you think what do you believe they did with it i believe that they are raising these babies these hybrid entities um and i believe that they are putting them out into the world to propagate the world with a corrupted seed i mean the seed war has been going on since genesis 3. yeah you know, that right to take away our birthright you know mm -hmm. uh, tim alvarino has an excellent book called birthright and he explains it very well but you know they're trying to take away the the birthright that 
God gave Adam in the garden. Right. And, and wh why, Karen, why you? What uh, Have you ever asked yourself why they chose Karen? Yeah, that's uh, definitely a question. I think anyone in this situation would ask themselves because right. it's terrifying and it's emotionally scarring. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that I have an O negative blood type and one of them, um, one of the greys once said, you know, that that was, my blood was important. Um, I think they probably said to everyone, you're very important, you know, but I, I've heard that from others. Um, so I believe it had something to do with my blood type, my family, you know, things of that mm -hmm. nature. And I want to talk, I want to cover all that. I want to talk about that. Let's go back real quick because then we have to take a break. Um, to this gentleman, did he have a name, the one that was real chiseled, good looking, that seemed to be with the, okay, he had no name. Did he have a voice? Did he speak? Did you hear any speaking at all? No, not physically, but he communicated with me. I could hear his voice in my head and he could hear my voice, but I would speak. I mean, I would speak out loud. Okay, all right. Um, I believe that this gentleman, and I want to talk about this when we go underground, we're going to dissect it. I believe that he's twofold. I absolutely do believe that he is a, um, well, he's a front. He's a front, um, but also could be an actual Nephilim. Um, because from the many interviews I've done, experiences I've had, they are taking these fetuses, they're growing them, they're birthing them, then they grow up, and then they uh, take on mates. Uh, the, 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 the sons of God going into the daughters of men, just like the days of Noah, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it shall be the coming of man. Same thing happening all over again. And they're populating. Uh, Karen, uh, the late great Russ Dizdar, we did many, many interviews. Um, and he made a uh, comment, uh, and I believe him, tens of millions of program multiples, tens of millions. I think that program... Pardon? I would believe that, absolutely. And I think... I think the program multiples fit into this taken process. They, they, not, not all, but I think it's part of it. What, what do you, what, what say you? I, I absolutely agree. Um, it's, I think it's a huge program. I think it goes far beyond anything we can even conceive of at this point. Yeah. I think it is infiltrated and spread across through. I mean, I am nothing special. I am in, in their eyes in God's mm -hmm. eyes I am, but, um, I'm just one of many, many, many uh, people uh, that were part of this. Absolutely. And, uh, we're going to take a break, but I'm just one real quick last question here. Um, we talked about the, um, when they would take these things that I don't, I hate to say things, but it, you would get impregnated, okay. impregnated this demon seed that they would connect with with your body, this demon seed. Is that a physical seed or do you believe it's a spiritual? Is it physical or spiritual, this seed? It was very physical. Yeah. Very. How do you believe they derive this physical seed from a spiritual platform? Um, do you follow what I'm talking about? I do, and that's a very, a very good question and a very interesting question. Uh, but you have to go back to your Bible, yep, the God's guidebook, because it is all in there. This is what happened, you know, in when the sons of man, which are, you know, there are so many different elder races that God created, not just us, and mm -hmm. when the fallen ones came on to. The daughters of man and made the deals for you know the same things mm -hmm. they're doing today we'll trade you technology and you can have you know yeah. so, um they were clearly able to change their form and this is all in god's word yeah. it's all in there and they were able to change to be able to then procreate with the seed of Adam with the, you know, the descendants of Adam. Yep. 
Absolutely. Karen, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to be underground. I'm going to ask you about your family, about their connection with the um, with the, the Masons. Also, there's a certain look in your family or, or, or there's a certain look of a person uh, type profile that scares you to death. And we're going to talk about why that happens and how that connects with your being taken. OK, um, so don't go with me. Uh, we're going to, we're going to be right back. Okay. Okay. All right, Karen, God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. That's Karen. She's bold enough to come forward and uh, say, Hey, David, here I am. Uh, has been working with LA Marzulli and, um, uh, matter of fact, she's in his new book. Um, we'll be showing that graphic, uh, pretty soon. When we come back here. Um, I want to, before I bring on, um, uh, my wife and we do prayer request. Um, I, I want to go to 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. Folks, you say, David, what do you mean? They're turning aside to myths. They're turning aside to aliens to abduction. No, get this. The myth is that they're saying it doesn't exist. Don't you understand the preachers in the pulpit, the demonic entities up there, and some of them are hybrids preaching, saying this does not exist. There are no such thing as demonic beings. There's no such thing as this abduction. There's no such thing as the demon seed. There's no such thing. That's why these churches have gotten these, these preachers with itching ears. They want to hear the best life now. They don't want to hear the truth. And they will turn their ears away from the truth, and they will turn aside the myths. The myths is, myth is that they're saying it doesn't exist. That's the great myth. God's going to turn them over to their own delusion because why? They won't put up with sound doctrine. Let's look at some sound doctrine. Genesis 6-4. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. What days? The days of Noah but also afterward. Let me say that again. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, but also afterward. What, after the flood? After what? When the sons of God went into the daughters of humans and had children by them, they were the heroes of old and men of renown. The sons of God went into the daughters of humans and they had children by them. God was disgusted. He wiped it out. But what about the demon seed? Did it make it through the ark? We're going to be talking about that when we come back. That's why I want you to go with me underground. We're going to be talking to Karen. I'm going to ask her about her family, about the Freemasonry, about how it might connect to you, about what you can look for, about what we can do about it, about how she actually overcame. Go right now. Sign up to davidhevner.tv so you can go with us. Question and answer. Okay, in a few minutes, I'm going to bring on my lovely wife. Um, if she's there, is she there, okay. Spencer? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, happy to be here. All right. Every time I call on you and you don't show up for those first four or five seconds, I'm thinking, oh no, did she get taken? And I'm, I'm believing if you ever got taken, it's only going to be by God. Okay. That's, That's right. Because if you call on me before my appointed time, I won't be here. <laughs> I'm a, a creature of habit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not going to get into that. Um, somebody mentioned, uh, let's talk rapture. No, we're not talking about that right now. We got some other things we're talking about. Shanita, what kind of uh, praise reports do we have? I know we must have some amazing praise reports because we've asked God to do some amazing things. So I'm ready for it. I am just so grateful for what he did last Wednesday. I mean, your surgery, that was at least a year you know, in of, of waiting, of praying, of yeah. suffering and trusting. And uh, I'm really grateful for the, how you persevered. That's a huge praise report. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, my, I, had, I had my right eye operated on for cataract and I, and I use this analogy spiritually that I thought I could see because my world was all tainted, but I became used to it over time. 
And then when all of a sudden they gave me the new lens, I'm going, wow, this is beautiful. I can see clearly now. And this is exactly our spiritual condition. Over time, we think we can see spiritually, but we can't. We have spiritual cataracts. But we need to, as Christians, go in and ask the Holy Spirit to remove remove our these cataracts from our spiritual eyes so that we can see. And this is why we do this uh, mm -hmm. every Monday. We ask God uh, for his guidance and direction, and we repent too. So uh, this Wednesday, I'm having the other eye done, so pray for me on that uh, the day after tomorrow. All right. We have Shanita. a first. Yeah, we were yeah. praying for John's cataract surgery, and Lynette let us know that it went well, and both of his eyes have turned out amazing. Awesome. And Wendy says, thank you for praying for my daughter. She is better. And I just want to say thanks to our deliverance team who reached in and worked with Amanda last week. And she has experienced deliverance. And we're continuing to pray for her for more deliverance. So we're giving God glory for what he's doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Any other prayer requests before we go to the Lord? We're praying for Barbara, for Belinda, for Brent, for Diane. Um, Paul, Vicki, Albert, Charles, and his mom, Allie, Sanda, Sandra, Kay's family, John, Kelly, Deborah, Kimberly, Scotty, Alex and Evan, Sunshine, Heather's family, and we want to remember your three sisters grieving the loss of your mom. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Shanita, for everything that, uh, that you do. I appreciate it, and I, and I do love you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for the sunflowers and chocolate today. You made my day. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, uh, got your Bibles. Make sure you have them, because when we come back, we'll be going through some scripture. I'm going to have Karen with me. But right now, we're going to go to the Lord. We're going to thank God for all he's given us. We're going to praise him. Praise him, praise him for the mighty power and the miracles that he has bestowed upon us. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for these words, and your words have not stopped. They will continue. We're trusting in that. I thank you for each and every person listening to my voice. I thank you for my guest, Karen, and every name that she need to mention. I thank you for that for each and every one of them, Lord. I thank you for the miracles you've done in their lives. I'm praying for the children right now, the children that have been abandoned, the runaways, the abused, the lonely, the comfort. Lord, I ask that you comfort them. It's a spiritual, it's a, a, a spiritually supernatural blanket around our children, a protection, of comfort, of love, Father, I'm asking you keep keep them away from the evil. Satan, you have no right to the children. In Jesus' name, you are gone. We cast you back to hell. We cast you back to hell. The, the demons of destroying our babies. I'm asking, Father, that the mothers will have a change of heart. Praying for that father that's been caught up in sin and lust. Right now, you know who you are. God says it's time to give your heart back to me. Praying for the lady who has been having dental issues. I don't know if she's going to have to root canal or if it's, it's been very, it has not been a good situation with her mouth. I'm asking for a complete healing right now, commanding a healing in Jesus' name. Praying for that lady out there that's having problems with her ovaries. Somewhere in her stomach, there's things going. We're commanding a healing in Jesus' name. There's a grandmother out there that has a grandchild. Needs to be healed. We're commanding a healing in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for the power that you've given us. We praise you for it. We pray for all the ones that have been taken, that have been abused, uh, 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 used and abused, and yet no one listens. I'm asking, Father, that you will now open up new doors, 
that people's cataracts, spiritual cataracts will fall off and they will see the truth of the evil and of who he is and what he's doing. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to come back. Um, we're not going uh, to underground right the second. We're going to run a few commercials. We're going to come back. I'm going to say one more thing to um, Karen, and then we are going underground. So it's your last chance. Sign up, TV. We'll be right back. They've made many, many movies about aliens. 